You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Successful Screenwriter Podcast, where we discuss anything and everything screenwriting. Here we interview successful screenwriters and filmmakers to find out just what it takes to make it in the industry. Just a heads up, this episode is brought to you by my book, The Guide for Every Screenwriter, which has been listed as one of the best screenwriting books of all time by the Book Authority. If you're looking for something that reveals the secrets of screenwriting in an easy to understand and engaging way, then this is the book for you. You can find The Guide for Every Screenwriter at thesuccessfulscreenwriter.com slash books now. On to the show. So I was checking out some shows online and I actually ran into the show Love in 2020. I thought this was a really great show. It's funny. It's about finding yourself and it's about finding love during the pandemic. Luckily, we were able to have the lead actor come on, the director, and even the writer of the show to show up for this episode. And of course, I'll have the links for their show in this episode's notes. Now here's my chat with the creators behind Love in 2020. All right. Welcome to the podcast we have on... In, an awesome cast and crew today from a really cool show, Love in 2020 Online. I have uh, Aaron Disbrow, director and producer, uh, Anna Jowler, the lead actor, Christina Garofalo Bonifacio is the writer. Thanks for being on, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you for having Thanks. us. All right. So I, I had the pleasure of, of watching the pilot for this. I actually really got into this show. Was, um, watching the lead character's uh, a journey was uh, pretty amazing going into this, this 2020 pandemic quarantine. So uh, before we really launch into what this show is about, I kind of want to get the origin story for it. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we actually started writing a, uh, a, a, a dating series a few years ago um, about a girl, sort of similar character, dating in LA. Okay. Um, but it never really, it always felt like something was missing. Um, okay. It never really, the stakes didn't feel right. The story didn't feel right. Cut to March 2020. The three of us are headed to a wedding across the country. Aww. And of course, uh, it's the same day that, you know, Tom Hanks lost Tom Hanks, oh, wow. <laughs> got COVID and basically we knew everything was shutting down and we were coming home from work. And if we were going to get through this time, we thought we have to work on something. So um, we dusted off that script and really redid the whole thing Um to tell this story about a girl who I think we all identify with, and I think a lot of women identify with, which is a girl who is, um, you know, just praised for her ability to be nice and to be accommodating and to be a pleaser. And um, we wanted to show how when you're stuck inside with yourself, you have to really get comfortable with who you are. And if you don't do that, it, those qualities can be a real problem in dating if you can't if you don't know what you want so it's uh it's such a powerful theme and as as a man watching this show i i could really feel for the main character jenna i'm sorry kenna as kenna was going through the dating process and really experimenting with who she was and trying to pretend to be multiple people I actually thought that was the episode that hooked me um Anna, can you tell me a little bit more about prepping for that? Because I mean, you went everywhere from like uh, artsy hipster girl to <laughs> like this punk rock girl. So I thought that was really fascinating. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, it was really fun getting to kind of try on these different personas. And I think it's something that I can connect to. Like I think about even when I first moved to Los Angeles, how it's yeah. I don't know. I think we can fall into that trap of kind of looking outward for like, who am I? Okay. Well, what is this person who, what does this person want to tell me that I am? And, oh, this person said that, like, maybe that's who I am as opposed to being like, wait, let me like look in the mirror and think about who am I? Who's, you know, authentic Anna, authentic Kenna, who's that, you know, yeah. but it, it took a while for me personally to get there. So I definitely um, connected to Kenna in those moments. And, and something that was really cool overall that just helped me connect to the character was that, you know, just being a part of the 
um, the creation of the story from the very beginning and um, producing as well. And so I just felt really enmeshed in Kenna's world from the get-go, which is something that I'm not typically used to as an actor who's typically brought on sort of at the very end, the very final stage of the production process. So this was just really cool being able to to sit with the character and really, you know, collaborate with Christina and pick her brain and get, you know, have so many sessions with Aaron and get director's notes, you know, from such an early stage that when I showed up on set, I was like, all right, she's in me. Kenna, Kenna's me. Oh, that's great. (laughs) Well, I I have to say, uh, Christina, uh, writing this character so that you can really kind of speak on those universal truths of who am I and trying to figure out who I am and then exploiting shallow apps that are online dating apps that can force you into sort of a predetermined template. I thought was actually quite brilliant. So you really do get the audience behind it. I was behind her. Um, Aaron, when it came to directing this thing, what I really liked about it is it's so easy to do a show like this and it's just the webcam. You're just doing the one shot, Mm -hmm. but you really took a a single cam type of approach to it where it felt like this is like a real TV show. I'm following her around. I'm I'm seeing her, her roommate's booty call. You know, I'm really kind of figuring out how isolated uh, Kenna is. And I thought that was awesome. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, thank you so much. Well, actually, it means a lot because, like, I thought so much about how to do these Zoom calls and how to make them interesting, right? Because I think so much of the series and the story is her on a Zoom call talking. To me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, and I mean, that's what our, a lot of our pandemic experience is like, right? Right. All of episode five is a date that she has an online date and it's literally just three shots it's ken in the wide close-up and then uh, right James, right yeah the character jack who she's talking to so yeah i thought a lot about this and i think ultimately you know christina anna and i talked about it and it's like we wanted to keep it in kenna's perspective right because we're seeing the world through her point of view so the shots of her on her laptop we're in the room with her, we're, you know, experiencing yeah. everything through her. And, but I really wanted to play the other side of it full screen, which like I hadn't seen. I feel like a lot of Zoom calls or a lot of these FaceTime calls, which I think, you know, in TV and film, people are still like figuring out a little bit how to do it. Cause it's right. still kind of this like, yeah. especially with mo- modern dating, modern romance now, so much of it occurs online. Um, so I think people are still thinking about how to make that interesting in the film format, but, um, yeah, I just wanted it to play kind of cinematic. So we made the choice to play the other person in full screen the entire time. And it was a little bit of a risk, but I think it, it just ended up working out in terms of, you know, showing, I I really wanted to show the connection between Kenna, especially during, uh, her date episode between Kenna and Jack. So yeah. I think playing, playing the actor full screen really gives you more information of like how they're feeling in that moment. No, I think it was, I think you nailed it. And, um, and watching it, being able to cut away back and forth with, with that as well. I think it keeps the audience's interest. I think I see a lot of these shows where it's just a zoom call. And the problem is, you know, you can have really engaging content, but it's hard to keep somebody's eyes glued on the same screen and the same character for more than, you know, 30 seconds or so. So I, I think the way that you guys shot this thing is, is pretty amazing. And, and there's a, there's a couple of iconic uh, moments. I have to, I have to say episode three is totally bonkers crazy and uh absolutely hysterical i mean that was i was when it came to writing this and developing that just if you don't mind i'm going to spoil it i'm just going to give the te- the episode title says it's sex episode so so that episode i mean how much of this was written versus how much of this was improv because i was getting some improv feel out of the characters interacting, but at the same time, I mean, you're hitting all of the story notes. Um, well, thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad it made you laugh because. Oh, it's absolutely hysterical. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it was pretty written, honestly. Okay. Uh, All right. I, I mean, obviously as things start to progress in that, uh, that call (laughs) towards the punchline, (laughs) um, you know, with the ex-boyfriend. 
Yeah, there's yeah. a little, there's, a, there's a little more of that kind of a little more improv feel, but um, okay. But we were, I mean, it was actually a pretty tough thing to write because it, we wanted to hit a lot of notes as to like why Kenna is putting herself in this situation. We right. haven't met this character before, except for via like text. So right, we wanted yeah. to show like, their history, a quick arc of like what the weak spot is here, what it says about her, what it says about her history of dating. And then um, kind of just show with that, uh, you know, we had the idea for the punchline kind of before we even smoothed out the whole, okay. uh, the whole writing of the scene. But, uh, but we wanted to just show that it was like a big backfiring of like everything <laughs> she's been doing and like how Funny. she's been emerging dating in her life yeah. and how to do that in a way that is poignant and obvious but also funny and doesn't make it too heavy you know no I think you guys nail it and 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 Anna has great comedic timing and and emoting so as Kenya as Ken Kenna it's um it's just hysterical watching it the reaction shots were awesome but building (laughs) into it with you know her eyeing the boyfriend of of her roommate and things like that is good people don't realize how difficult it is to write a short form episode if you have a long you know full 55 minute episode you have a lot of play that you can kind of get the ball rolling but being able to write something a little bit shorter and to hit all of the notes and to keep it going and making it just it's actually incredibly difficult and i think you guys nailed it with every episode which is why i am uh, so impressed by this show um Anna when it came to shooting scenes like that I mean give me a little insight oh man it's you know so again I guess we're not going to give away too much yeah but like the title says it is, it. it is the sex episode please know that we this was filmed at uh seven in the morning are you serious? <laughs> yeah. You know, first you're shot, like, day, like first shot of the day. You're like, let's wow. just get right in there. I mean, you know, we Christina and I have been, we've been best friends since college. So there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of trust there. Okay. But it's still always nerve wracking when, you know, you've got a camera in your face and you're like, wow, we're really going to go there at 7 a.m. Okay. In the Amazing. middle of the pandemic. Great. Yes. Um, so anyways, I would say I got through it with a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of trust, a lot of support from these lovely ladies. But oh my gosh. Also, sorry, I want to add that I was hiding behind the bed in the scene. <laughs> I'm like literally lying on the floor with the script oh behind my God. the bed behind That's Anna awesome. while she's doing this. It's That's just morning. it. I, yeah, I think Christina's it's... perched in the front as well. So yeah. it's just like, there's just people tucked away, little in-between takes, like heads are popping up to like give me notes. I'm trying to stay in character. I've oh got my like, God. you know, awesome. my yeah. partner on FaceTime at seven in the morning. I'm trying to, it's. I think I... our sound person was in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I have a small room. That's awesome. <laughs> Quiet on set. So uh, uh, with this, uh, you guys are all friends. What I really love about this is your bunch of filmmakers that came together and decided to really capitalize on the quarantine. Did you have trouble like running into things like funding and budgeting or anything like that? I mean, what were the hurdles you had trying to make this thing happen? Because these things, inevitably, you're always hitting a wall somewhere. Absolutely. I mean, I think our biggest hurdle, we would all agree, was just trying to film so early on during COVID. Because right. we filmed this, it was a four-day shoot, uh, the first four days of August in 2020. So when we decided to to do this, a lot of people hadn't even really started filming yet. Like, it was right. new territory. You people, know what were, I mean? people were getting, like, B-roll footage of empty streets. I mean, that's pretty much all I was exactly. ever seeing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so it was really new territory and we definitely, we faced a lot of obstacles just in pre-production. Um, I mean, we were obviously very low budget indie shoots that we self-funded between the three of us. Okay. Um, yes. This, we, this does not look like a low budget film by <laughs> any means. I mean, it, it's, Thank it's, you so it's, much. it's shot in it's shot in at very least HD. I'm assuming you probably went higher than that. And, uh, the, the way the, everything is set up, it's, it's good. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing where this thing goes. 
Oh, thank you so much. I mean, we owe a lot to our very good friend and director of photography, Kristen Mendez, who uh, was so kind to work with us on this project with her red camera and a nice. lot of the production quality. Um, I'm just so appreciative of her and also all the people who supported us and agreed to work with us on this yeah. because we were really, really lucky. I mean, again, nothing was going on. So I think we got, we got a lot of really talented people who were just like, I just want to work on something and yeah. be creative, That's you awesome. know? So, so we really lucked out um, to that end, but yeah, there was a lot of stuff like even just with SAG trying to figure out how, I think they were still flushing out um, just the COVID protocols. And right. we really wanted, we wanted to keep paperwork. Oh God. I don't even want to, I don't even want to get into that. All right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I mean, you, you get people, they think they have a red camera and they can go out and shoot something, but the sound is terrible or they never get it color correct. I mean, this is a professional shoot. This is something I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Are you guys looking at distributing it anywhere else other than online? Um, well, we're actually, um, we're planning on keeping the series online for now, although okay. you know, if, an, if the if the right opportunity presented itself, I think we would entertain it. But um, our main thing actually is that we want to turn it into a feature, which oh, is usually, awesome. Yeah, kind of a different route for a, a series. But um, as we did this, we kind of realized that um, this story between Kenna and Jack was uh, people really were captivated by the episodes that oh, showed yeah. them connecting. And we just want, people want more of that. And I think that because of COVID, I mean, obviously it's, it's going on for some time, but, you know, to understand the time kind of in a, a start to end mm -hmm. open shut way, I think would lend itself well and kind of keep it in that style of the late nineties, early two thousands rom-coms that we, we all love. Well, that, that's making, but that's making a comeback. I mean, I actually had been talking with somebody a while ago, I think who was it? It was Kevin Sorbo. I had him on the show and we were we were discussing about like where films were going. And because, you know, I was like, zombies are gone. You're not going to be seeing all this dystopian stuff anymore. People, because we've just lived it, right? So if we've just survived it, we don't want to watch it anymore. We're going to see comedies. We're going to see musicals. And that's what you're saying. Like, like look at Schmiga Dune, right? So um, I can see like the 90s style rom-coms starting to come back in. And so what I love about your take on 2020 is it is a positive approach. It is about personal growth. It's about people finding love within themselves and then growing to accept love within the, from others. And that is awesome because you're going to see like the quarantine horror films done to death. But this, I think, sets you up in a niche where you're definitely going to find success. So to hear you say, oh, we're going we're gonna to look at making this a feature, I think that's a beautiful thought because I was like, is there a sequel coming? Um, I'm so excited for you guys. I can't wait to see what else is going on. Do you guys have anything else coming up? Right now, I mean, I'm I'm working. So I, I didn't mention I work in post-production. So I'm working on um, a movie, Borderlands. But other than that, we're, we're you know, totally. Like the video the game, season. Borderlands? Video game, Borderlands, Shut, yeah. Are you kidding me? I love yes. that game. Oh my God. Well, thank you for your hard work, ma'am. You've got a lot on your shoulder. Doing my best. I'm, doing my best. <laughs> I'm just be saying fun. Yeah. hashtag claptrap. All right. So uh, Christina, do you have anything coming up? Are you working on anything? Anything noodling? Um, well, I, I'm working on the feature script. So awesome. That's, Beautiful. That's the big thing. Um, and then I actually just found out that I'll be attending a writer in residence um program that was part of lighthouse film festival which we wow. were in um back in may i guess but they postponed their writer residence uh of course COVID. so yeah so yeah i'll be headed there in november for a week and uh post up in a beach house and hopefully oh yeah it's a tough life <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly oh, but... I'll, I'll 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 pray for you <laughs> <laughs> and Thanks. anna anna what do you have coming down the pipe <laughs> Well, we're, you know, we're continuing with the festival run for 11-2020, which is very exciting. Um, so we have La Femme Film Festival coming up, which we're excited about in downtown awesome. LA. And then the Sunscreen Film Festival, which is in Hermosa Beach, which is which is where I live. So I'm excited oh. about that. I've, and, I've, yeah. been, to, I've been to the uh, film festival in Hermosa Beach. 
Really? Yeah, Why? it was. Um, oh, gosh, what was the name of it? It was an indie film festival. Was it sunscreen? Yes, I've been to that one. Yes. Yeah, I, actually, I was uh, I was Nothing. a I was a finalist at uh, the contest of contests. And then we get to do we get invited to Hermosa Beach. I was at a Ron Perlman red carpet premiere where I got to meet him and then make a total fool of myself. So <laughs> That's fantastic that you're going to that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, we're super stoked. And then, um, yeah, and then I'm actually, I'm filming a role on an NBC sitcom that we're, we started shooting a week or two ago and we're going to pick up um, next week. So yeah, we're all keeping busy. Congratulations, guys. This is awesome. It's nice to see a group of friends really come together and make something super special. When this thing starts going into feature mode, hit me when you're at Post Pro and I'd love to have you back on this show. Um, Thanks a lot again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share in your social media where you can tag us at The Successful Screenwriter.